to stay. And we seek for your unwavering support so that this project would go a long way towards the achievement of the Better Ghana agenda of His Excellency the President. I know that this is the first time that this celebration has been held outside Accra and the first community that has hosted this celebration in this guise is Bruni Krum. I'm Chende. Mr. Chairman, uh, the theme for this year's observance, as we have been told, food prices from crisis to stability is very unique as it reflects the current trend of issues as far as food security is concerned at the national, regional, and international levels. According to the FAO, this theme was chosen to shed light on the current trend of escalating prices for basic food items and what can be done to lessen its impact on the vulnerable in our societies. It's important to note that within the space of five years, the world has experienced two serious food crises, the first one being 2007-2008, and the second one being 2010 and 2011 in the area of prices. Mr. Chairman, upswings in price especially represent a major threat to food security in developing countries. And when it happens, the hardest hit people are the poor in the society. Indeed, as the UN uh, resident coordinator stated, uh, the World Bank indication is that 2010-2011 rising food costs have pushed nearly 70 million people into extreme poverty. This is something that is worth noting. 70 million people added to those in extreme poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, in some other countries, uh, we are aware that anger about high food costs and frustration has resulted in very violent reactions in several developing countries. Indeed, in some places, heads of states have been removed and social disorder has been the order of the day simply because of inadequate food and or 
high food prices. As we celebrate the World Food Day 2011 here in Ghana and in Bruni Krum, let us look seriously at what causes swings in food prices and do what needs to be done to reduce their impact on the vulnerable numbers of our society. Mr. Chairman, some of the possible causes of swings in food prices could be erratic rainfall, low productivity, continued underfunding of agriculture, and rapid economic growth in emerging economies. A further contributing factor may be the recent entry of institutional investors with very large sums of money into the food commodity markets. Distortive agricultural and protectionist trade policies bear a significant part of the blame. These are all the, some of the challenges that we must overcome. But at the top of the solutions to these challenges, ladies and gentlemen, as stated by the FAO Director General, is the political will. And I must say that fortunately for us in this country, this is what President John Evans Atamel's government keeps demonstrating, the political will to overcome uh, food challenges. He has stated over and over again, I mean, President Mills has stated over and over again, that notwithstanding the oil find, he will make agriculture the pivot for his socioeconomic development agenda. My Penyere candidate, Ghana, Yenya Fango, BBP, Yoha, Yenya Fango, and we are not going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. President Mills is on our bind. Spang, we are yin yin, oh, madam, I am on Sigana. Oboshe Kuyafo, Oboshe Afarfo, my way to mana war yen, or the Piagana mine, Nafang Wusikan, or the Baba Beshe, Kuyayunum, and a farfu way to manum, now my yina, ye want to hear, or my Ghana, yet see me more. And Payama Kakraso, a wire yen, Uzi Hundasidam. Mr. Chairman, although for now there is adequate supply of food commodities in the Ghanaian market, prices have remained relatively higher comparing 2011 to 2010 and 2009. 2009. With the exception of millet, the prices of all the major cereal staples, namely maize, rice, imported rice, and sorghum, have gone higher in 2011 than previous years as reported by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's uh, Statistics Research and Information Directorate. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture together with the FAO office in Ghana, have agreed to append a sub-theme, Greening Ghana with Coconut, to this year's event to draw attention to the coconut plant disease and to critically address national environmental issues which seriously affect our food security. Mr. Chairman, the Ministries of Food and Agriculture and Lands and Natural Resources are engaging communities to plant various tree species purposefully to address the environmental concerns and also to reduce poverty. As we talk of food crisis, Mr. Chairman, the plight of one crop comes to mind. The juice of this crop is a major source of refreshment and arguably comes only second to water. The mature nut is eaten with any carbohydrate as a main meal. The oil is the most popular when herrings are in season while the flesh is for making cakes and biscuits. For lack of time, I will not go into its medicinal and industrial uses. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about coconut. Once upon a time, as uh, Rhoda told us, this dear country of ours had as much as 43,000 hectares of coconut cover. Sadly, about 14,000 hectares of this 43,000 belonging to roughly 14,000 farmers because there's an average of one hectare to one farmer, have been destroyed by a strain disease called the Cape St. Paul's wilt disease. This Cape St. Paul's wilt was first detected in the country at a, a village called Woi near Cape St. Paul in Volta region in 1932. The disease reached Cape Three Points in Western region in 1964. And in 1988, the disease was detected in Ayin Sudo in the central region. Between 